Hello buddy, Insane Frame here, back with another video. In our last video in this series, we did a 4,000 subscriber special as it's important to celebrate each milestone and the 5K is on the way, so don't worry. But today we're gonna go ahead and ask the question, can you beat Fallout 4 as the sole survivor? Now to put this challenge in perspective, we can use several different sources. The official trailer has a laser musket, for example. Some pictures have a hunting rifle, but we're just gonna go ahead and stick with leather armor and a hunting rifle and to try to keep it as close to the original image as possible. And unfortunately, whilst you can make an argument for dog meat, we're gonna go ahead and be a singular party member as it is the sole survivor challenge after all. Kinda has it in the name. Anyway, let's move on to the rules. The rules are as followed. We can only equip the 10mm pistol and hunting rifle as weapons. We're only allowed to use a leather armor and a vault suit. No glitches or exploits, no cheating or modding the game's files, and we're gonna be playing on very hard difficulty. So we begin in character creation, it's very straightforward as we're gonna be playing as the default avatar the game issues us, so thank you Todd. Vault Tech soon call when we get to name our character and we could call ourselves the Soul Survivor, but we decide to name ourselves Nate as that's the Soul Survivor's full name. And as for our special stats, we try and round them off as much as possible, minus the charisma, so we go for free strength, five perception, five endurance, one charisma, five intelligence, four agility, and five luck. Sort of giving us a jack of all trades sort of playstyle, really suiting the soul survivor's sort of feel. We see a human loaf of bread that is our son, then hoof it to the vault whilst the fridge is still open as we back away from it slowly. Once the world blows up, we are then frozen and we start the gameplay. We get our wedding ring and see the rad roaches. We sneak past and get to the overseer's office. We grab ourselves the 10 millimeter pistol and open fire on the rad roaches. They all get destroyed by our wrath and not gonna lie, that felt really, really good. We grab the pit boy after showing the rad roaches what for and open the vault showing the world outside to Nate. We get the special brook, improving our luck by one, so our next goal is to get our equipment for the run, which will be some lava armor and a hunting rifle. We go to Trudy's, kill Simone, and then Trudy kills Wolfgang, it's funnily enough, and then we travel to outside the Museum of Freedom, where some raiders are looted and we loot them for their lava armor. Now we just need a chess piece, which is easily done. We also level up and go for the armor rank one perk, which will let us improve our lava armor. We make our way to Diamond City, but first we get Tales of a Junktown Jerky Vendor. Comment down below how many times we grabbed this, but anyway, we've leveled up, so we grab Gunnut Rank 1, which will help mod in our hunting rifle in the future. Once at Diamond City, we see Piper talking to Thin Air and do her performance. The gate opens and we find what we're looking for, which is a hunting rifle. Wow. We're pretty much all set now, which is excellent. We also purchase a leather chest piece, so we're all set to go. We move out to a nearby warehouse and get some star points for headshot in a raider. And then we go ahead and make some green paint. Upon arriving back at Diamond City, we speak to Abbott about the wall. And since we already have the green paint in hand, it's a match made in heaven. We then give some attention to our armor and upgrade our pieces to studded leather armor. And our vault suit also gets some love and is upgraded with an insulated lining, improving our energy resistance. The hunting rifle's receiver is upgraded so we get more damage out of it and we avoid putting a scope on it but we make a glow sight as I don't see why not. And following our improvements we go and have a couple of skirmishes and level up. We get fortune finder rank 1 to help with our cap troubles and this will help massively over time. And with everything looking pretty decent, we go to the Triggerman hideout and we try and snipe Dino. He then gets shot in the face and gives us the overseer password and we then meet Nick Valentine. We also level up again and decide to get Fortune Finder rank 2, which allows us to find even more caps in containers and on enemies, pretty much solving our money problems for this run. We then meet Skinny Malone and we don't really have time to listen to him so we just shoot Dala in the face and we do the same thing to his two henchmen. And as for Skinny, we take pop shots, then use vats to end him with a well-placed bullet. Nick meets us outside, he thanks us and offers his services as a private investigator. We also buy the Wastelander's chest piece, giving us plus one perception and agility, which will be very useful. We also sell some of our goods and upgrade our hunting rifle. It's starting to look pretty damn good now. 
Nick and Ellie then interview us, we ask some questions, and they say Kellogg Cornflakes is responsible and fits the description for kidnapping our son. We go to Kellogg Cornflakes' house and it's locked, so we go to the mayor's secretary and we completely ignore Piper. We bribe the mayor's secretary for Kellogg's house keys, and yeah, we get to Kellogg Cornflakes' house, use a switch under the desk, find a secret room with all of his stuff in, and then Nick does a whistle, and we get to meet his friend, the one and only Fluffy Dog Meat. He's a fluffy doggo, but unfortunately his debut ends here. I know it's short-lived, you good boy, but um, unfortunately we can just go directly to Fort Hagen, as we know where it is. We also hit level 7 and go for riflemen, increasing our damage with non-automatic rifles by 20%. Fort Hagen has some simps, our rifle does very well against the droids, but the fight with Kellogg Cornflakes is very unorthodox, taking an interesting turn. So we take out one of Kellogg's simps and we run for it as it, he's just too powerful, and the fight goes into the office. Kellogg hits like a truck but we hide behind the pillar and take pop shots at him. We then use that before winning the fight in a very odd and pretty, yeah, unusual manner. We nearly died but it did get the job done. We end up killing the other simp when we go into where we met Kellogg and we use the terminal to find out our breadloaf son has been kidnapped by the institute. Fair enough. Then the Brotherhood of Steel show up in their lovely airship, yay, and we rendezvous back with Nick and Piper and for some reason Piper act like she knows us but anyway nick suggests we go to the memory den so we head on over to good neighbor and we meet dr armani who gets us hooked up to the memory sequence and we quickly go over the memories we then learn of a scientist called brian virgil who escaped the institute and is in the glowing sea hiding once we exit the memory sequence we go talk to nick valentine and bid him farewell the museum of freedom is then next on our list to do it's really easy as we can just one shot the raiders thanks to our rifleman perk we meet the Minutemen, and to be honest, we're mostly negative, but hey, it's good experience. We take to the rooftop and snipe the raiders from afar with our iron sights. It's actually pretty cool as we get to see the Deathclaw spawn, and he's running around eating raiders, so yay. But we have to go in a more direct route and head to the shop and shoot him up close and personal. But we use Vats and shoot the Deathclaw in his belly, so the job's a good one. And the Brotherhood hit a steal, say hello with one of their patrols after the whole ordeal. Well... Thanks for helping guys, I guess. We talk to Preston and that's that with the Minutemen with a couple of caps to boot. And we do a side quest for Hancock in Pikmin Galley and scope the place out where we even find a missile launcher. Really, really nice. Also, since it's nearby, we go into the old church and kill a few ghouls. We find a dial that spins and we put in the code Railroad, which opens up a secret location and introduces us to the faction known as the Railroad. Desdemona ambushes us but Deacon vouches for us because we killed Kellogg Cornflakes and you know what? Because of that he's our friend. Now Desdemona asks some pivotal questions and we go ahead and answer honestly saying we want to fight the Institute and save Sims. Deacon offers us a job for covert operations, we accept it as quite frankly it just sounds fun and in previous playthroughs we're mean to the railroad so I guess it's just time to cut them some slack. We get a level up and we go for bloody mess, improving our damage across the board by 5%. Not amazing, but it will help out a lot where it counts. Deacon looks the part and we get to work. We meet Ricky, who quite frankly just complains a lot, but we relay this information to Deacon and he says we can take the tunnels in this operation, so we do just that. The simps are easily dealt with as we can just two tap them in the head, we use some turrets to ambush more simps, and we eventually get to the vault and get what we came for, which is the Carrington prototype, and we then make our way out of here. Upon reporting back to Railroad HQ, Deacon is blatantly lying to Desdemona, even for a white light, it's kind of excruciatingly exaggerated. But we want to join the Railroad, and as for Desdemona's whole whole ordeal she lets us choose our code name it seems fitting we go for bullseye as ironically we're a sniper without a scope very quickly dr carrington signs us a mission as well as handing over his prototype and now we also go ahead and purchase a rifle from tinker tom called the tinker tom special as it has a silencer on it and most of the mods that we want this will help out massively we go to Good Neighbor to get supplies for our rifle and we rework the whole thing into being a duplicate of what the Soul Survivor rifle looks like. And we even rename it accordingly so now it's as good as the real thing. We also hand in our side quest to Hancock and level up which allows us to get Bloody Mess rank 2, upping our damage across the board by 10%.
Our next mission is afoot and we visit Old Man Stockton. He gives the location and tasks us with clearing some raiders. A very simple task. Our rifle performs absolutely fantastically and we wait for Old Man Stockton who gives us a sim for our location. Once that's done, we just wait around and High Rise shows up and helps to escort the new sim to safety, which is extremely easy due to us already taking out the raids beforehand. Once at the safe house, it's all good and we can now head back to Railroad HQ. Dr. Carrington appreciates it, so we turn our attention to the Glowing Sea. Once we arrive at the Glowing Sea, it's exactly what you would expect, being irradiated to all hell. And there are hordes of feral ghouls, but it levels us up and we even find a nice explosive pistol amongst the loot. But we can't use it due to the rules of this run. As for the death claw outside Virgil's cave, rather than take it head on, we go to the ledge and perch ourselves on the ledge. And we use vats and shoot it in the belly, as you wonderful people have said in the comments that death claws are weak on their bellies. And right you are, as it deals a lot of damage. But we continuously shoot at the death claw, chipping away at its health. And to be frank, I thought this would be much more challenging, but we emerge victorious. Anyway, we pay Virgil a visit and say hello. He states we need to kill an Institute Corsa. So we go to Green Tech Genetics, where the gunners are in full swing with their operations. We also have a level up and go for the Mr. Sandman perk, allowing us to deal 15% more sneak attack damage and we can perform a one-shot kill against sleeping NPCs, which is kind of against the rules, but to avoid any discrepancies here, we just simply won't use that part of the perk. The gunners are fairly challenging due to their laser fire and our armor being pretty bad for this point of the game, it's pretty annoying, but our damage is really decent. However, the Corsa is a different story and was one of the biggest annoyances thanks to his stealth boy. He can turn invisible and also sets us on fire with his pistol, doing a lot of damage. We take cover but make sure we can shoot at the Corsa and he also takes cover which is perfect as we can take reliable shots at him and eventually letting us use vats and a critical hit to heavily damage him and end him. That was easily one of the most difficult enemies thus far and took about two hours of attempt but we take the win and make sure he's dealt with accordingly. After the events at Green Tech Genetics, we get the Corsa chip and speak to Desdemona. She's in good spirits about this and has clearly had her tea for the morning and helps us decode the chip with Tinker Tom. We get what we need, we also level up and go for Critical Banker, allowing us to store a additional critical hit whenever we need it most. We return to Virgil with the Corsa chip in hand and he gives us some blueprints for a teleporter. Tinker Tom is assigned to help us build the teleporter and we make our way to a raider camp, get ourselves a military circuit board and we get to a hospital overrun with super mutants and we get a level up in the coolest way like in a 1980s action movie. We even find a legendary 10mm pistol which we'll rename as it's fairly useful when wandering around in the wilderness. As for our level up we go for sneak so we're 20% harder to detect while sneaking and we get the biometric scanner from the hospital. The teleporter is built and Desdemona gives us a special assignment which is to locate Patriot inside the Institute. We're teleported in and we immediately use the network scanner and we also get a reply from Patriot who says to meet in advanced systems maintenance room, which is, to be honest, extremely easy and convenient. Father then introduced himself, we go down the lift, suit in hand, we find the Oscoin in child simp who, spoilers, is not our son and then father shows up who's our loaf of bread son. He'll always be a pun or a joke in our book, so uh, thank you, Todd. After meeting the division heads, Dr. Fillmore, Dr. Clayton, Dr. Madison Lee, who makes an appearance in Fallout 3 and gives us fast travel access to and from the Institute, so thank you, Madison Lee. And lastly, Dr. Io. So we meet with Father and he sends us on a simp retrieval mission, which should be easy enough. Then we go ahead and do the task we were sent here to do in the first place, which is to meet Patriot, who's right in front of us and he tasks us with gaining a password, which shouldn't be too difficult. We report back to Desmona, who asks us to document the report. Pam then tells us where to get the password we're looking for and we move out. On our way, we level up, so we go for another point in sneak, so we're 30% harder to detect while sneaking and no longer trigger floor-based traps. Once at the Polymer Labs, we defeat lots of ghouls, get the password and solve the puzzle to fabricate a piece of T-51 power armor, which is nice, but it isn't really useful for us. We talk to Molly and she decides to lift the lockdown of the facility and we're free to go. 
Desdemona gives us the green light with the plan and gives the password to Patreon. We talk to Z114 and he says to give him 24 hours to rally some simp personnel who share the same motivation as him to work with the railroad. So whilst he does that, we're going to get on with the simp retrieval quest. We meet up with X688, a Institute Corsair who wishes to help us out. Our rifle does an excellent job at taking out the raids from afar and keeping us out of danger. We board a wooden box and get to Gabriel's main ship. We then meet Gabriel, we use the recall code, kill his men and then report to Father who has now given us a new apartment. How lovely. We report back to Father who states the railroad are dastardly villains, so we just agreed to keep our cover, but our next assignment is Bunker Hill. We meet up with a Corsa in the field, and we jump over some cars and go straight to the basement in the trade area. Once in the basement area, we run past everything, destroy a couple of turrets, then meet our new recruits for Z114. They just don't know it yet. We use the recall code on each and every one of them, so they go back to the Institute and our cover is not blown. With our mission complete, we talk to Father on the rooftops. Father reveals he unfroze us and that we passed his loyalty test, so our cover is saved for another day. Excellent. To make things even better, we get a level up and we choose rank 3 of sneak, so we're 40% harder to detect while sneaking, and we no longer trigger any more mines, which is a lifesaver in and of itself. So no more setting off mines, which is superb. Speaking of mines, we report to our simp friend in the Institute, and he wants us to kill some guards in the Institute mines. So we help out, and the simps give them some stopping power with our rifle by taking out a few guards. We simply have to admire our handiwork in these mines, which is just splendid. Z114 is pleased with our work, and we both keep our actions under wraps. So the very next thing we do is attend the director's meeting. They mention the railroad is afoot. Well done guys, we're in plain sight and just don't dwell on it too much I guess. And they speak about moving on to phase 3 and Father also has a terminal illness and concludes the meeting naming us his successor, which is just fantastic news for us. Also, the good news keeps on coming as we level up again and go for better criticals rank 2, so our critical hits now do double damage, which is just simply amazing. The mass fusion quest begins, we also get a prompt that will be enemies with the Brotherhood of Steel. It's not such a big price to pay really. Once at the mass fusion building, we take out a couple of grunts, use our critical hits in vats to end the night, and we find a key card and take the lift. We get ambushed as we travel down the lift, but we do a good job, and when the lift is sabotaged, a knight jumps down and we simply run off. We use the first floor windows to take cover and deal with the knight. We fix the lift and continue to go down. Once in the main lobby, we then locate a second lift to the reactor and we temporarily grab a hazmat suit, but only for the reactor room so we can grab the beryllium agitator. We then don our drip again and disregard the hazmat suit on the floor. Now for a tough fight. The sentry bot takes countless attempts and we use our critical hits in bats to disable one of the chain gun arms. We then take constant pot shots at its second chain gun arm until we disable that, forcing the sentry bot to detonate. We get a front row seat to watch the show and it's absolutely breathtaking. We then have to deal with two assaultrons, but we target a leg on each assaultron and break them, so they're both crawling on the ground. We then shoot them in their arms to finish them off and we make our way to the lobby and mop up the rest of the Brotherhood of Steel forces. We report back to Dr. Fillmore and after that we level up and get Rifleman rank 3, doing 60% more damage and ignoring 20% of the target's armor, which is very nice indeed. Our next assignment is in a house to recruit a scientist who locked himself in a room. We do a poor job and to be quite frank I don't even know why this quest is in here but the Institute just send the synth our way anyway to incapacitate the guy. We make sure the scientist knows what for and we pull him in his place with some good old fashioned lead. Once we report back, it's time to do a speech, and whilst remaining undercover, we have to go to Diamond City Radio to solve this puzzle, so all is good. We return to the reactor, put in the beryllium agitator whilst Father is giving a speech, and we talk to Father after the speech has concluded. He lets us chair the next directorate's meeting, and the Institute give us, a railroad agent, their battle plans at the meeting. So well done guys, um, we go for the synth production because our armor isn't all that good and it would be nice not to be gunned down with better weapons. Father then says he suspects us being a part of the railroad but we use a silver tongue to convince him we're not and evade his questions. 
We also meet Z114. He warns us of the Brotherhood attack in the railroad. So we go warn Desdemona and she gets all agents mobilized. We also level up and go for a critical banker rank two so we can save an additional critical hit. And we're going to need it, especially against the Brotherhood. Speaking of which, the Brotherhood to still raid the Railroad HQ. This actually takes quite a few attempts as the Knight takes a few hits and the soldiers throw grenades which do a lot of damage to us and pretty much one shot us if they land near us. But with a couple of critical hits we take out the Knight and the soldiers are no trouble without the Knight. We then see the lowest point of the run and Glory, our waifu, is dying and we make sure that we promise to avenge her. She's now KIA in the field, the poor thing. For our waifu, we kill all the Brotherhood of Steel members in the tunnels and even kill a legendary Brotherhood Knight. Now we must destroy them in their entirety aboard their airship. Desdemona says it's time for Operation Red Glare. So with our rage, we go to the Cambridge Police Station and take out all Brotherhood personnel. We head inside and we destroy all the squads and turrets accordingly. We see Tinker Tom and he gives us some explosive charges and we begin to steal a vertebrate. And for some reason, Tom just doesn't want to take off, but we level up and we get the perk, The Mysterious Stranger. So in that, we have a very slim chance to summon a figure that can instantly kill our targets. But the chance is very slim, but it might pay off. Anyway, after taking out two knights and a vertebrate, we finally take off, but we can't use the minigun as per the rules. We manage to board the Pridwim and we immediately get open fired on and we run and take cover but our perk helps out and the mysterious stranger instantly kills the knight. So that's really really good. Then we have to go inside and plant explosives so we sprint through the ship avoiding as much gunfire as possible and this actually took a while because Elder McNamara, uh, okay I'll, I'll stop that joke but um Elder Maxon just instantly kills us if we don't take precautions, so we activate a stealth boy before we get into the main bridge, buying us enough time to exit the airship, and we board the Vertibird, getting away from the Brotherhood. Tom lets us get hit with a lot of laser fire as we fly away, and we use the last of our stim packs, but we get to see Elder Maxon and the Brotherhood in a smouldering ruins because they hurt glory, but it's still not enough, and Desdemona agrees we have to take the fight to the Institute. We teleport into the Institute and speak to Z114, and he helps us eliminate the Institute forces next to the relay. The railroad are teleported in, and Desdemona gives us a pulse charge, which is excellent, so we get to work. The service part of the Institute is easy enough and poses no difficulty. The railroad's extra firepower really does help us out here. Bioscience is hilarious as the fight is so one-sided, and we even spank a gorilla in the ass and then shoot him in the face. The plaza is even easier since Z114 came through with the sims and they are stomping the institute forces very rapidly, doing a fantastic job. We meet Sean, who he forgot he was our loaf of bread son, so we bash him, use a bullet on him, Smith and Wesson style, so we'll never bother anyone ever again. We make our way to advanced systems and the battle at the reactor goes very smoothly. We place the pulse charge and get teleported out. We actually decide to take the child simp for once because... You know, we always just refuse and I guess it's the first time for everything. And we teleport out, hitting the detonator, ending the run, answering the question, can you beat Fallout 4 as the sole survivor? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Okay, that challenge was much, much more difficult due to the lever armor. It's not the greatest, but some armor is better than no armor. And the Brotherhood were definitely the hardest opponents of the run. They hit hard, took a lot of damage, and by the time we had to board the Pridwin, direct combat was not really a thing we could do anymore. Definitely really, really tough. But it was nice to side with the railroad for once, and usually with these challenges you find a point where it gets easier. This one though, it was easy from the start because we got to use the 10mm pistol, but it just got more difficult the further into the story we went. Anyway, with that, we're going to be doing another Fallout 4 challenge, which is can you beat Fallout 4 with a revolutionary sword? It's going to be fun and melee is pretty cool, but I'd like to thank each and every one of you. You are fantastic. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you just being awesome and being really cool. So like the video if you like the video. Comment down below. It's absolutely fantastic interacting with you all and it's so awesome just to see what you guys put and how you think and of course subscribe if you're new anyway take care have a good one have a beautiful time have an 
excellent day and I hope you guys have an absolutely brilliant night. I'll see you in the next one. This is Insane Frames signing out. Thank you so, so much for watching.